Hi and welcome to episode 64 of the Aria Bark podcast. My name's Caroline and I'm coming to you today from my home in Fife in Scotland. If you're a new viewer, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. It's great to have you here. You can find detailed show notes on the Aria Bark website, which is ariabark.co.uk. You can find me on Ravelry as either Aria Bark or my personal account, which is Sotra. We have our Ravelry group, which is the Aria Bark podcast. We have a private group on the website for anyone who would like to take part in make longs or chatter or just stuff. And you can sign up by going to the community tab, then groups. We'll ask you a few questions, make sure that you're a crafter. We will then send you an email to advise you that you're able to log in. If you've already signed up, then just press log in. We have an Instagram page, which is Aria Bart Designs. We have a Facebook page, which is Aria Bart Designs. And we have a Kofi page, which is Aria Bark Designs. We are currently running two make-alongs at the moment. The first one is the hashtag ABD Stash Mash 2022. It started on the 1st of January and ends on the 31st of December. You must be a member of either the Ravelry group or the private group on the website for your entry to count. Prizes will be drawn quarterly. There is physical prizes for the FO thread. Winners are going to be chosen by random number generator. Mr Barker Andrew will choose entries from the chatter thread and those winners will receive a pattern of their choice up to the value of £10. Whips are allowed and multiple dipping is encouraged. As long as it can be measured in metres, then it can be entered. So knitting, crochet, chinising, crochet, spinning and weaving. Goals are at your own discretion. You can increase and decrease whenever you like. And each person entering will have one FO thread post that all projects will be logged in. The next make along is the hashtag yappy and scrappy make along 2022. It starts on the 1st of January and ends on the 31st of December. You must be a member of either the Ravelry or the private group on the website for your entry to count. Prizes will be drawn quarterly. There will be physical prizes for the FO thread. And Mr. Bark and Andrew will choose entries from the charter thread and the winners will receive a pattern of their choice up to the value of £10. Whips are allowed and multiple dipping again is encouraged. The only rule for the blanket make along is that blankets must be a minimum of 16 by 16 inches to qualify and there is no maximum size for the blankets that is entirely the crafter's choice. Make sure that when you're putting your entries into the FO thread that you also place them into the charter thread to double your chances of winning a prize and also if you're going to be using the hashtags on Instagram make sure that you're using the correct ones they can be found on Ravelry or in the description box below there is also pictures on Instagram if you check out my feed there should be pictures there that will give you the hashtag for them this week we have Correction Corner, Coming In, Going Out, Stash Mash and Whips. In this week's podcast there is just a lot of knitting. Lots and lots of positive knitting. And timestamps for each section can be found in the description box below. I would like to thank Mandy from Mouse's Mates and Alice from Soxina and Alice both on YouTube for informing me obviously Mandy informed me a long time ago and it completely went out of my head then Alice informed me was it Monday or, either Monday or Wednesday Alice had said to me that there was a problem with the hashtag for the blanket make-along 
Apparently you can't add an and sign into a hashtag. It's only took me three months to figure that one out. So we've had to change the hashtag on Instagram. Obviously it will have been up while we were discussing the blanket make along, but we've had to chase, change it to hashtag yappy n scrappy blanket make along 2022. Really the only thing that's changed in it is the and signs being ta taken out and an end's been put in its place. Um, if there is any problems, contact me on Instagram and I will try to sort things out. Or alternatively, you could use Ravelry and put your pictures in there. It is the middle of the month. I'm so happy. Which means that the third instalment of the My Arnie Corner advent has come out very excited it's in my box in the cupboard didn't peek took them out the wrapper put them straight in it was awfully awfully good i got slightly confused when signing up for the sock club and i don't know why i genuinely thought that it was every month you would the sock club was every month obviously it was only for every only for three months However, I am continuing to get mystery sock yarn sent to me thanks to the wonderful Alex and Danny. I'm still paying for a sock club that doesn't exist and they're just surprising me with yarn, which is a bonus. Who doesn't like a surprise? So this month I received this stunning. I'm going to say absolutely stunning. On it. Now, not a major fan of pink, however, stunning. This came in about one o'clock this afternoon, and by half past one, I had already picked out a project that it was going to be put into. Unfortunately, I can't at present remember what the project is. I will inform you of that next week. So, this is my yarny corner. It is Shine Bright, which is a hundred grams or four hundred meters for the main skein, twenty grams or eighty meters for the mini skein. No, nearly that as bright as that is actually more a darker pink than that. It is a seventy-five percent superwash merino, twenty-five percent nylon. You get. 400 meters and 100 grams or 80 meters and 20 grams. I love it. It smells amazing. Oh. So I would like to say a huge thank you to Alex and Danny for continuing continuing to surprise me every month. I absolutely love it. And I am hoping that very soon I will be able to cast this on. Alex and Danny are, have a shop on Etsy where they sell their wonderful bags made by Alex and yarn dyed by the wonderful Alex and Danny. If you are interested, there is links down below and there will also be links in the show notes for you to go and have a look. I have a finished object. I am so very happy. Well, I've not got one finished object, I've got two. They're the same item, but I've got two of them. So, as you remember last week, I finished one Lysianthus sock. The goal for this week was to have both the socks finished. I have two Lysianthus socks. So I'll put that one down because you've seen that one before. This is the Lysianthus socks by Becky Norman. This was where I was last week. 
as you can see I have done up the leg I have done this is the integrated heel by Albina McLaughlin I have done the heel I have continued the pattern down the foot I have done a rounded toe they are done I'm ecstatic this is this is slightly better no be much and same on that side just fractionally better than the other one I loved this yarn to death um, modifications as I said I've put in the integrated heel by Albina McLaughlin it is so comfy it is easy to put in love it um, the yarn I'm using is My Yarny Corner My Yarny Corner in shade Zebra it's a 85% superwash merino 15% nylon you get 360 meters and 100 grams I used 77.06 grams I have 22.94 left um, and I used 277.06 meters I am so happy I used a 2.5 millimeter high high 99 circular and I love these socks the yarn is so soft they are I've not I've tried them on I've not properly worn them yet they are exceptionally comfy socks so now that I do have actually that shows the pattern off better just see if I fix the foot right so there's the pattern absolutely loved it if I was to make them again I would not be putting the side bits in it's just a bit too much faff for me and I think what I would do is rather than putting in a full repeat I would probably end it a bit here and if I ended it there this is that's where my toe starts so I would have a few rounds where I would just have plain knitting before I started the toe um, the pattern calls for a wedge toe I've put in a rounded toe to try it out and I love it and I'm about to put it on my feet because my feet are cold um, is there anything else I don't think so they are seriously comfy socks my goal is to craft 26,000 metres this year at the beginning of the week I had crafted 9,555.60 metres the Lizzie Anthus socks has added another 277.06 metres which brings my total this week to 9,832.66 metres no too shabby at the beginning of the week I had brought in 12,179.53 metres the yarn from Alex and Danny has brought in another 480 metres which brings my total yarn coming in as 12,659.53 metres not overly concerned it's not nearly as bad as what I was sitting at this time last year and I do have a fair few jumper and cardigan projects on the needles at the moment so obviously if I finish them then I can beat my goal which is not to use up more than what I bring in so that means to target I have 16,167.34 meters which again is not that bad I'm not going to worry just now so far this year I have 
crocheted 174.04 metres. I have 9,658.63 metres. I've not spun anything and I've not woven anything. Now, I am taking part in the Ravelry Project Challenge. I have absolutely no clue where I am with that because I forgot to add those details in. So there'll be another correction corner next week where I clarify that unless I have a finished object, then I'll just add it in at the same time. My first whip in my Rip Rip Room bag is, now do I have, yes, again, being very, very professional. This is my, did I finish in the middle of the row? No, no didn't I? No, I didn't. I don't know how well this is actually going to show because I seem to have trouble showing it. Summer t-shirt by Vera Sanin. don't know why this won't. There's the V. Yes. Now, this was where I was last week. So this was where I was last week. The goal was to get, what was my goal? Five inches done. I have not measured this. I have absolutely no clue whether I've got five inches done or not. I've done four. I'm not majorly disappointed to be doing four. Um, I have started doing the decreases for the waist. Yeah, so I started doing the waist shaping. Not majorly concerned that I've not managed to the five inches. That's plenty to be doing in a week. Um, I Modifications, absolutely none at present. The only thing I think I'm likely to do is lengthen the length of the sleeve. So I think the sleeves sit round about here. I'm going to lengthen it down to about here. Um, what else? I am doing a size 6 which is a large or 44 inches and the yarn that I'm using is Drops Cotton Merino in shade 21 which is Heather I am using a 3.75mm high higher sharp on a 32 inch cord. I think the plan for next week, I'm going to say another 5. Either another 5 inches put on the body or finish, it, finish the shaping. I think that's a fair enough goal. I thoroughly enjoy this project. This is a very very easy knit. It is a paid for, oh forgot to say it's a paid for pattern on Ravelry. If there is anywhere else where you can purchase the pattern I will leave it linked in the show notes. Absolutely love this. I actually have plans to make another three or four other ones of these in different colours. And I've not even finished it yet. Absolutely love how the yarn feels and I can see me wearing this all the time. So that is that one. My next project in my My Cottage Number no. 9 bag. Love, 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 love that bag is my Bridge Before Home Cowl which is an amalgamation of the Bridge Before Home Socks by Angela McGowan. I'll leave a picture in here. Absolutely loved the socks. Decided that I needed the matching, but wouldn't be matching. I need a sibling cowl. And what I've done is I've used the Bridge Before Home 
it would help if I held it the right way round. The Bridge Before Home sock pattern. That's roughly what's going to look like once it's been blocked because that'll all run out. And the sock head cowl by Kelly McClure. Again, I'll leave another picture in. So I've done the four inches of ribbon to start off with. I've done my ten repeats. Now I'm going to swivel this back round because that will stop them rattling off the table. This was where I was last week. The plan was to do ten repeats. Then I have done ten repeats. And I have this much left to do the ribbon. Now I think I've done I've done ten repeats. I think I've got another thirty-five to do. That's going to be more than enough to do thirty-five rounds of the ribbon so I'm not going to be too bothered I'm going to leave that there so I can remember to count however I'm going to take out all the stitch markers for the pattern repeats the bridge before home socks are a paid for pattern on Ravelry and um, if you are unable to use Ravelry you can contact Angela who is knitting on the farm on Instagram and she'll arrange payment and getting the pattern to you and stuff. Um, the sock head cowl is a free pattern on Ravelry or on the Boho Knits website. All this will be linked down below. I am using Knit Picks Felici in shade River Rock. It is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. You get 199 meters and 50 grams. This is my second ball. I think the last time I weighed it, I had 20 odd grams left. I'm using a 2.25 millimeter high high sharp for the ribbon, and I used a 2.75 millimeter for the body. As I said, I absolutely loved the Bridge Before Home socks. I enjoyed putting the pattern in to the cowl just as much. Not 100% keen on the four inches of ribbon. However, I've only got 34, 35 more rounds to go and then that's it finished. The goal for next week will be to have this completed. Obviously, I did this, I did that this morning while waiting on the milkman. So obviously, it, it didn't take me long to get that done. So that is my plan for next week. This will be finished. My next project and my very own handmade Bambi bag is the project that gave me so much hassle last week. I'm just going to get it out of the bag. This is Papillion by... Nope. Svetlana Volkov, Volkova. This is going to be my entry into Mandy from Mousy's Makes. Hashtag Knitting with Ukraine. Love it. Not going to lie. Absolutely love this. Now I'm going to hold this up. Do you see my, obviously this will, when I block it, obviously that's, the eyelets and everything are going to open up. Love it. Not going to lie, absolutely love it. Now, if you watched last week's episode, you'll know that I ripped this out because I'd done something wrong. Well, it turns out there is a teeny tiny mistake in the pattern and for my size there's two increase rows missing. So when was it? I think it was Thursday. 
Um, on Thursday mornings I attend Monday from Mouses Makes Zoom. So I was on Zoom, got, obviously the goal for this week was to have it recast on this bit not as easy the second not as hard at the second time around actually real miraculously easy doing the envelope neck once you know how to do it so the goal was to get to section two now this marks where section two finishes i had got to section two and i counted the stitches and I had the exact same number of stitches that I had before I ripped it out. Now, sorry, I've just noticed I had a lifeline in and it's made my stitches go a bit skeebiff. So I was speaking to the ladies on Zoom and the consensus was just do two other increases and I was like right that's fine then you go into the section where you're not just increasing for the sleeve you're increasing for the sleeve and the body at the same time and I thought do you know what I'm not wanting to get to the end of that and find out that I've got like eight stitches too many because obviously you're working the increases and the lace pattern at the same time So I thought, do you know what? The easiest thing to do is work out this is the number I have. If I work all the, in the increases the way they're supposed to be worked, what's the stitch count that I'm going to have? So I measured that. I was still eight stitches short. So I thought, do you know what? I'm going to count to make sure that there's no other problems with that size. So it worked out all the increases fine everything's fine for that section and I am how many increases have I done so far I'm about to start the sixth increase on this now this I really dislike when I put stitch markers on obviously this stitch marker just reminds me to move I use knit companion so this reminds me better if I should do it the right way around this these two are to show that i'm going to the lace pattern uh, starting the lace pattern finishing the lace pattern the two orange markers here show where i've to move there's a wee blue marker that you can move and it just makes it easier for me doing the lace repeat this stitch marker absolutely no idea what that's there for this one, I'm pretty sure that marks the first full repeat of the lace pattern. I do not know why that's there. I don't know. I genuinely do not know why that stitch marker's there. Now it's going to bug me. Um, absolutely love the pattern. It is so enjoyable to work on. Now I cast this on, I think that originally the plan was to cast it on on either the Saturday night or the Sunday. I didn't cast it on until late Sunday night. I started doing the front and the back band and I think Monday morning I actually did start putting it together. Obviously, this gets worked on alternate days. So obviously one day I'll do, one day it was the summer t-shirt and the Lizzie Anthos socks. The next day it was Papillion and the Bridge Before Home Cow. That seems to be working, doing splitting them off and obviously I think there was a couple of days during the week where I didn't actually work on the Lizzie Anthos socks and I actually started start working on them until Wednesday 
and I did manage to get them finished in a couple of days. I'm just going to keep working on this. Um, I'm no longer going to be putting lifelines in. Only because... Can you see that? This is where the lifeline was. It is leaving really weird... Marks and my knitting. Now I dare say once I block it, that's going to block out. However... In the off chance that it doesn't, I'm not wanting that all the way down my jumper. Um, plan for next week. I am wanting to get to the stage where I separate the sleeves. This is really enjoyable. I have enjoyed working on it. I may or may not be wanting to work on it a lot more than what I really should be working on it. That's how much I enjoy it. Um, I am not going to do my usual, which is start knitting on the podcast, because it does involve a bit of concentration. The um, Papillion is a pay for pattern on Ravelry. Um, modifications, I'm making absolutely none. The plan will be to just keep continuing on as per the pattern and hopefully by next week I should have separated the sleeves and hopefully got a bit down the body. I'm not going to hold my breath because I do have quite a few increases left to go. Oh, I never said about the yarn was. That, and there's my knitting fell off the table. This is Stanley Yarns Katrina. It is 100% acrylic. You get 1,200 metres and 200 grams. Is it 200 grams? Yes, it's 200 grams. Um, what I've done is I have held two strands together because this is a four-ply. The pattern calls for DK. As you can see, it's just starting to misshape him. Um, I don't think you can properly see. There's a bit of a hole. There's a wee bit of a hole. Not much. Um, I'm just going to keep carrying on with this until and see how much this actually takes. Um, I did have 2,400 2, metres and obviously I've held two together so obviously for my size I think it only asks for about eight or 900 metres so I'm going to have plenty left over. Um, is there anything else? Oh, I am using Ah, 3.5mm for the ribbon and a 4mm Drops Classic or a Nip Pro Nova on a 32 inch cord. Um, the Papillion is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. I don't think there is anywhere else to get Papillion because I have had a look. However, if I do find somewhere else to get it, I will leave links in the show notes. At this point, you'll be looking for, obviously, the, what I've said the last couple of weeks is once I've finished Lizzie Anthony socks, I'm starting up Fairy Tale by Vicky Moroz. I finished them, and today I was sitting, I was like, right, will I cast them on? I was like, no. I do still want to do the fairy tale socks, however, I have just finished lace socks and I don't particularly want my next project to be lace socks again. So, I had two little nuggets. 
did I forget? Yes, I did forget to put the ball band in. This is actually I'll use that one because it's easier. This is West Yorkshire Spinners in shade 941, which is Robin. I had, I think it was 71 grams of this sitting on my desk. And I kept moving it and I kept moving it and I was like, well, it's too wee to go into my box because I'll end up losing it. I was like, I'll leave it there and I'll start a pair of shorties. Well, that's what I've done. And my lovely wee bag by my yarn corner. Again, available on Etsy and they're on YouTube. So, let me untangle myself. This is Road City Rollers by Mara Catherine Briner. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. I started this a few hours ago. And I love it. I think all my socks will be Rose City Rollers from here on in. I'm only ever knitting Rose City Rollers or possibly Jelly Rolls. No, try that part now. That's the next one. This is how much I've done since this afternoon. The one modification that I'm making is I'm going to put the integrated tail in. And obviously, as you can see, I've started doing the gusset increases and this one's marking this one those are the original 32 stitches these are my gusset increases this marker's marking my last knit round because I may have put in is it six six increase rows and forgot that there had to be a knit row in between Oops. My goal for next week will be to have both the socks finished. As you can see, obviously I'm on the gusset increases. Once I finish that, I've not really got that much left to go. So the plan is I'm going to do these. Hopefully, I'm going to carry on with these this week. Hopefully I will get the Bridge Before Home Cowl finished. At that point, I'm going to add on the fairy tale by Vicky Morrows. That's what I'm going to do. And then once I've finished these, my plan is, is to do the jelly roll by Mara Catherine Briner, which is pretty much these, but it's got another wee well and some fancy bits. I'm so excited. Um, this is a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, so far I have been unable to find anywhere else that you can get the pattern and the West Yorkshire Spinners is 75% wool, 25% nylon, you get 400 metres and 100 grams. I am using a 2.25mm higher higher sharp on a 32 inch cord. Um, is there anything else? I genuinely do love this. This is my favourite. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my zebra that's my zebra being stuck back in to mark where I am this week. I'm just going to keep carrying on with this. Um, it is a really, really, really enjoyable pattern. Do I think I will get both socks finished for next week? Pretty much. I think I should get the two socks finished. Obviously, once I've done that, I've only got about five inches. Five? Seven. Might need to count. I think it might be five inches. Yeah, from there it's only about five inches before I put the toe on. And obviously this is very enjoyable. Um, what I might do is once I've turned the heel, hmm, once I've turned the heel what I might do is stop, transfer this over onto my flyers. then get the other sock up to the same point and knit the two of them together. 
Um, if I don't get them finished for next week, I am not going to cry because they are thoroughly enjoyable. Um, is there anything else? And I've done lined up together. I accidentally done lined up with my whips, so we'll recap. The plan's going to be, I'm going to do Jelly Roll, stick a picture in. This is by Mara Catherine Briner. The plan for them is once I'm finished the Road City Rollers, I'm going to start these up. For that, I'm going to use Kinkle Zigzag. Again, I'm going to use the Integrated Heel because I really do like how that heel fits my foot. Um, Road, Jelly Roll are a paid for pattern on Ravelry. Um, again, I'll leave links down below. Um, once I have finished the Bridge Before Home Cowl, I'm going to start the Fairy Tail Socks. Again, I'm going to be using the Integrated Tail instead of the Heel Flip and Gusset. I will use the February. February February Sock Club from My Yarny Corner which is during the war and I'll be using a 2 sorry I'm swinging I'll be using a 2.5mm high higher sharp for that one um, the fairy tale socks are a paid no they're not they're a free pattern on Ravelry again I, I don't think there is anywhere else you can purchase that pattern um, is there anything else? I feel like I've whisked through that. Um, I have had quite a positive knitting week. Um, nothing has had to be drastically ripped back. The Lysiantha soaked that last repeat was ripped back in Rena, ripped back in Rena numerous times. I just could not get that last repeat finished. However, it is done now. They are on my feet. My feet are toasty. And they're so, so good. Obviously, I'll need to take them back off for getting pictures done. Um, is there anything else? I don't think so. So, what has been happening this week? On Sunday, Miss Aria had gone to donate blood for Pet Blood Bank. I am going to leave details in the show notes from here on in for anyone who would be interested. If you have a dog and you live in the UK, not entirely sure if there's an equivalent elsewhere. I dare say there prob probably would be. Um, Pet Blood Bank is a canine blood bank. It's a big bit like, obviously, humans giving blood, obviously. When dogs go for operations or they're sick and they need blood transfusions, the Pet Blood Bank provides the products. Um, you have insurance. I'm pretty sure the insurance pays for it. Or you pay for it. If you take your animal to something like the SSPC because they have animal hospitals um, PDSA, places like that that are charities Pet Blood Bank do discounted that sounds really bad, discounted blood products they do it at a discounted rate for other charities for people who would normally be able to afford having that sort of money to pay for blood transfusions and stuff like that. Um, Aria donated 450 millilitres of blood and from that 450 millilitres there is the potential for Aria to save up to four other dogs and obviously a chihuahua is not going to need 450 millilitres of blood. Um, it can be brought down into smaller versions or if it's a bigger dog then obviously clearly a bigger dog's going to need a bit larger amount of blood. Um, 
um, she done exceptionally well. I'm going to stick a picture in. She did get her red bandana. Didn't think it was going to happen, but it did. Um, she's done really, really well. Um, she has a lovely patch here of no fur. She has a smaller patch here of no fur. Um, on the left side, they test to see what our some sort of level as for donating. On the right side is where they actually go into the jugular vein and take the blood from. Um, they do a health check beforehand. They wear, check that everything's fine and they'll give her a shave and then she goes from the exam room through into the actual procedure room where poor people have to lift her up onto the table. Now Aria is a big big dog. She is 45 kilograms and was there two, two or three of them had to lift her up onto the table. Now it's not like the normal vet table where it's like really hard. There's a lovely great big padded cushion thing sitting on top of it and daddy was there plying her with peanut butter. Xylitol free peanut butter. Um, I think the whole donation took about five minutes for it to fill up a bag. They leave her lying on the table once they obviously take disconnect the bag for her neck and she lay there for a wee while. Um, they checked her heart rate. Um, what the vet did say is normally the heart rate will increase from before. So if her heart rate gets checked and or check up. I think her heart rate was 120 beats per minute, something like that. It was 120 after it. It never budged an inch. They, once obviously, they let her come round. Well, she's not, it's not like she's knocked out, obviously, she's still awake. She's fully awake during the whole thing. Um, they let her recover slightly because obviously they've got to bandage up her neck. Um, they let her sit up and then after a couple of minutes they lift her onto the floor and Aria was neither up nor down. Aria gave herself a shake and jumped through the table, gave herself another shake and just ran about the room like a Dafty. To say we were exceptionally proud of her was an understatement. Um, we had tried when Aria was one for her to give blood and I'll, oh, what I'll do is I'll also leave details now. I know for a fact the blood bank are always in need of DE, DEA1 negative breeds which are, now can I remember them off the top of my head, German Shepherds are one that are likely to be negative breeds. Um, Border Collies are another one. Can't remember if it's Rotties or Via Maranas. It's one of the two. And Greyhounds. They're the other ones that I know for a fact are. Um, so the wee sample that was taken in the checkup that gets tested to see what blood group Harry is in. She will either be positive or negative. If she is negative, she will go back in eight weeks and give more blood. If she is positive, it will be six months. Because obviously, I think the plan is going to be this year she'll go every eight weeks and then she'll move on to every six months because they don't need as much negative, uh, positive blood as what they do negative. Um, if she's negative, it'll be every eight weeks, Ariel will go and give blood up until two months before her ninth birthday. 
and she'll at that point she'll give blood and at that point she'll be retired because they don't do blood donations after they're nine if you do have a large breed dog and you are interested please 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 consider it it doesn't hurt them at all obviously if they show any sort of sign of being uncomfortable or being scared or anything like that it gets stopped um aria is a nervous dog naturally that's her pretty much baseline um she is a great big massive dog she uh, can be very very scary at times however if you put a cardboard box in front of her she will go and hide under the bed so when they'd called la no last week the week before and i spoke to the coordinator i was like look i know she would love to do it because she's going to get rewards at the back of it if you don't let her try it you're never going to know if she's going to be able to give blood because aria doesn't like going to the vets she's never bitten the vet vet she's never been in any way shape or form aggressive towards the vet she might not like being there but she will cooperate and it's about showing her that good things happen you give blood good things are going to happen so obviously dad was plying her with her peanut butter literally if she walked in till she left on the way home she was taken into pets at home and we bought her the world's biggest bone I would love to say here's her bone however that lasted until Sunday night because she'd ate it it was very very positive um, her fur is starting to grow back ever so slightly starting to grow back um, we'll find out in, and I think the vet already said that she did have they had got details through a all the blood counts and stuff like that and what her levels are sitting at um we will get a pack through in the next 7 to 14 days to advise us what aria's blood type is which also also comes in a comes in very very handy if anything was to ever happen to aria we would know exactly what blood type she was and obviously all the details and at that point we'll download the app and then we can book her in to all the blood bank sessions that are going um, is there anything else um, what else has happened this week just a lot of knitting lots and lots of positive knitting um, I'm going to carry on doing the alter, alter oh, start again alternate days for my projects so obviously I think what I'm going to do is I'll do the summer tea and the bridge before home socks. Bridge before home socks, not socks. It's a cow. Um, I'll do the summer tea and the bridge before home cowl one day, papillion and the rose city rollers the second day, and I'll just keep changing them um, I'm hoping to have the cowl should be finished for next week so there's not much left to do on that um, I'm hoping to be nearly finished the summer tea papillion I doubt very much if I'll be finished that because I've got miles to go on that and if not one both of the Rose City Rollers should be done by next week Again, we would be eternally grateful if you subscribed to the channel. Um, if there is anything you would like to ask, again, leave comments down below. If you would like to join Knit and Natters, they are a Wednesday at 8pm British Summer Time and a Friday morning at 11am. Contact me on Instagram, I will add you to the group. 
and you'll be given the passcode and the room IDs and stuff like that. It is not mandatory to attend every knit and natter. You don't need to have to stay for the full thing. You can jump in, jump off whenever it suits. Um, is there anything else? No, I think that's about it. It's slightly longer this week. I feel like I've rushed it. Um, anything we've discussed will be down in the description box below. Yeah, so that's about it. Um, coming up this week. Do I have anything coming up this week? I don't think so. I think there might actually be a couple of appointments this week. I just can't remember what they are. Um, I'll probably end up doing my usual and getting a phone call for the doctor going, you forgot to come. Or the doctor will phone and go, hi, we have a phone appointment. I was like, really? Does it happen to mention what I was needing to speak to you about? Is that everything? I think that is it. I am going to go, I am going to get this edited and I'm awaiting that in my socks because I like my socks. So I hope you have a very, very crafty week and I will see you back here again next week. Bye!